Hello folks and welcome. So you're watching this on Linux for Seniors. This is a brief history of Linux and its founder. And I'll give you a couple of um, trivia tips about the founder of Linux also. And uh, I'm going to be discussing on um, some data about uh, where we are all the way up to uh, year 2023 and where Linux is found and ran. So hopefully we'll have a little bit of fun today talking a little bit about uh, the founder and a little bit of trivia on the founder and uh, what devices use Linux. You are watching this on Linux for Seniors and I'm going to be doing this in a presentation format. There will be an icon of a person the whole time during the video here if you want to subscribe. So I'm going to open up the presentation and go full screen and we're going to start with the founder of Linux, Linus Benedict Torvalds. And here's a photo of him. It's an older photo, but uh, nonetheless, now you know what uh, Linus Benedict Torvalds uh, looks like. He was born 28 December 1969, Helsinki, Finland. So at the age of 10, he began playing or dabbling with programming on his grandfather's Commodore VIC-20. And uh, he studied at the uh, University of Helsinki from 1988 to 1996, where he became famous there for his operating system called Linux, not to be confused with his first name, Linus. So while he was at the University of Helsinki, he bought his own PC, which used Microsoft DOS. I remember these machines. I actually had one or two of them. But he was not satisfied since he preferred Unix, and who doesn't? Since the University of Helsinki used Unix, so he decided to create his own PC version of Unix. So history was born, and I remember this. So back in 1991, he posted the software and made it available for free download and released the source code. So history was made. So this is a brief history of Linus Benedict Torvalds. Now, moving to today, 2023 Linux, where is it used? So I collected some data for you and some of them you may find surprising or maybe not so much. So as of December, 2023, hot off the press, Android, an operating system using a Linux kernel is the world's most used operating system when judged by web use. That should be of no surprise since Android Mobile phones are found everywhere on planet Earth. Mobile phones dominate the planet. Next bullet, supercomputers. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. Most modern supercomputers use Linux, but they use a customized version of it. Bullet number three. What OS or operating system is used on most smart appliances? So let me define that a little bit. Smart refrigerators, smart washing machines, dryers, possibly even your home internet router are some of those examples. So at first glance, most used operating system for IoT devices are Windows and Linux. However, Linux absolutely dominates, accounting for 70% of all IoT operating systems. The last bullet you may find surprising or maybe not. Virtually all smart TVs are powered by some Linux-based operating system. Continued, what OS uh, is found on Google phones? Well, that should be no surprise, Android. So Android usually dominates the mobile phone business on the market for the planet Earth. iPhones are very popular also, and uh, but they're all a very small market. So I'll go off a little bit here and talk a little bit about Linux and Unix. They're very similar. Now, another similar operating system is actually Apple Mac. Microsoft kind of went the other way. So if I talk about the three common, it will be Linux, Unix, and Apple Mac operating system are Unix based or type. So in other words, they have similarities. How's that? All right, so moving along, let's talk about bullet number two. Some of you folks may find this really surprising, but Linux is used to power 96% of the world's top web servers. Actually, as of current data, 96.3%. So basically, Linux runs the internet. 
Bullet number three should be no surprise which OS do banks use. Well, it's Unix and Linux for security reasons. All right. This again is public information. I'll say this again. This is public information. The United States Department of Defense uses Linux. The US Army has one of the largest install base of Red Hat Linux. So I'll be showing you a link to a website uh, and through that link, you can actually find a link to Red Hat if you are curious. Now I'm gonna continue. So the US Navy nuclear submarine fleet also runs on Linux or runs Linux, I should say. And that's including their sonar systems. So what about those rocket scientists over at NASA? No pun intended. So an article went out in 2016. I know this is quite old data, but uh, NASA uses Linux systems for avionics and critical systems. Yeah, it just needs to work as one would say. So I was reading a, a, about an article about the Mars rover, which has created uh, a lot of the software is created from a, a third vendor. But that also uses a customized version of Linux. You know, that uh, little guy that picks up samples on Mars, Mars rover. Well, we need to mention Microsoft too, um, because NASA uses both. So you can see where it says, while well, Windows machines provide general support, performing roles such as house manuals and timeless timelines for procedures and running office software. So again, that just came out of that article. All right, last bullet. What devices run Linux? Well, Linux is actually everywhere. It's in your phones, your thermostats, your cars. I'll give you an example of that. You know, those fancy radios you have with those big screens that you plug your smartphones into for mapping. All right, they're more likely are Linux. Smart refrigerators, smart washing machines, and etc. Amazon Fire Sticks, Roco devices. Although I, I'm reading that uh, Amazon Fire Sticks are going to be converted to more or leaning more toward the Linux kernel than the Android kernel. Uh, Android, again, is also based off the Linux kernel. All right, and moving along, smart televisions. Next one is, uh, as I pointed out, it also runs most of the internet. 96.3%. A lot of your servers from Google and Amazon web services, Amazon also sells products, but they also have web services. You can Google that yourself as the one that say, or search for it to see how many servers they have. You'd be quite surprised. Okay, and the next one is all the world's top 500 supercomputers. And last is the world's stock exchanges. So Linux can be downloaded for free if you did not know that. So if this is the first time you've ever heard of Linux or you're wondering about Linux, I'm going to make a recommendation that you first go take a look at distrowatch.com. And uh, because they have over, I put down 100, but there's over 200 different Linux distributions that you can link through them. I have DistroWatch as a website link in my About section of Linux for Seniors, if you want to check that out. You can certainly use any work, uh, web engine to find Linux, but Linux is the operating system. You're looking for a Linux distribution if you want to download that for your home use. For your home use. Bullet number three, I just decided to throw that in there because I know a lot of folks um, struggle with this. So sometimes one does not have the skill set or the knowledge to download and place the computer image on a writable DVD or USB stick. Well, you can certainly find those videos on YouTube, including Linux for Seniors or other sites. But if you did not want or don't know how, you don't want to do this yourself, in other words, download that Linux OS and place it on those writable DVDs or USB sticks to do this for free. You could also purchase some of those different distributions on a USB stick or DVD. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Amazon.com offers some of those distributions and so does Walmart. The only thing I'm going to caution you on is when you go purchase something, look at the, the version number. So I'll just throw out a generic name. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Linux distribution, version 2. Well, maybe version 12 is what they're currently using. So you always want to check the version numbers 
So go to the respective Linux distribution site or use DistroWatch to go through them and then the site and check the version numbers before you purchase. Buyer beware. Some of those distributions may not be upgradable because they're too old. All right. And again, you can't find every single distributions this way. A lot of times doing this stuff for free based on videos you find on the on, on YouTube or even Linux on seniors, you can do this yourself. Do you need to be a computer geek to install and operate Linux? Not today. In 2023, certainly not. You know, 30 years ago when I started, not so much because uh, we didn't have all those fancy point and click screens. But most major Linux distributions are point and click today in 2023. Most of them also do dual boots like Windows 11 and some other Linux version. I have that as actually in my living room as one of my laptops that I look at once in a while. It has both Linux and Windows 11 on it. Most of the stuff in my office are all tower computers loaded with Linux distributions. Now, also, most Linux distributions offer you software stores, sometimes with thousands of different, diff different uh, well, programs or applications. There are many distributions out there. Some of them offer you more or less in thousands of different pieces of software. How much do these programs or applications cost? They're offered to you in most cases under no cost. I can think of one or two distributions and it's a mixed bag. They only charge for certain pieces of software, but they're usually applications, as I said, not the, not the operating system. Although sometimes when you do um, go onto a Linux distribution, they're asking you for a donation, but that doesn't mean you have to mandatorily give them that for test driving it. That is all up to you. You know, that would be just like a donation if you want to call it that. Okay. So have fun with Linux, free OS, thousands of programs, great security. And don't forget, you don't need to purchase licensing in case you want to install this on multiple computers in your house or even your office. And most Linux distros offer you free office suites. I just wrote in their LibreOffice because that's what I'm using for this presentation. Word processor, spreadsheets, presentation, database. You can also download a lot of these independently if you just want the word processor part. So thanks for watching. There's lots of Linux tutorials on the web and also try Linux for seniors on YouTube. Thank you for watching.